Hello, everyone. This is the Circuit Python Weekly for November 1st, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get together uh, to talk about all things Circuit Python. My name is Scott, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPython-dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens at Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. If the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord, Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, let us know. Uh, there is a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video so you use the doc to view, so you can use the the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python and hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to, take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the, la since the last meeting, and we'll, you'll uh, and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. Uh, this is also the final part. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time is too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. I will switch over to note stock, take a time code and get into community news. So, uh, community news is a chance for us to see uh, all the things that are happening in CircuitPython, uh, Python and MicroPython, the wider world of all these things. Uh, so first up, uh, the Raspberry Pi 02W was released last week. The Raspberry Pi 02W was announced and released in limited quantities by the Raspberry Pi uh, trading company. October 28th, uh, from the Raspberry Pi news. Uh, priced at $15, Raspberry Pi 02 uses the same Broadcom BCM 2710A1 SOC system on the chip, die as the launch version of the Raspberry Pi 3, with ARM cores slightly downclocked to 1 gigahertz, bundled into a single space-saving package alongside 512 megabytes of low-power DDR2 SD RAM. The exact performance uplift over the original zero varies across workloads, but for a multi-threaded sysbench, it's, it is almost exactly five times faster. And there's a, a number of links in the newsletter uh, around the 02W. So check out those links uh, in the newsletter uh, when it comes up tomorrow. Next up, uh, the Pi Ladies talk on the basics of hardware with CircuitPython. Uh, Pi Ladies Southwest Florida host Kira Hartledge demonstrates how to use CircuitPython to control a Circuit Playground Bluefruit circuit board on YouTube, and there are links there to the resources for the presentation on GitHub. Um, ah, this is what happens when my 
I'm typing ends and ends into the note stock because that's the same key I use to do the mouse pointer. Um, and Adafruit Halloween. Adafruit loves Halloween, both in making hardware enabling people to build spooky things and decorating and dressing the part. Adafruit's electronic Halloween has been a staple for many years. Here is a selection of pictures of the Adafruit team from last Friday. Next up, the Melbourne MicroPython Meetup. Uh, the Melbourne MicroPython Meetup for October 27th had some interesting presentations. There's a link to the main slides there. Uh, topics discussed include a monitor for real-time MicroPython code, MicroPython message pack, a MicroSQL Lite library module for MicroPython, and a uh, driver for the VL53L5CX, uh, which is both for MicroPython and CircuitPython. And I should note that um, Matt, who runs Melbourne MicroPython Meetup, updated maybe four, four months worth of MicroPython Meetup. So there's lots of good videos and stuff on his YouTube channel and the Melbourne MicroPython page uh, on GitHub, too. So check those out. It's a great way to keep up with what's going on in, in MicroPython land. I watch and follow a lot of that. OK, next up, Halloween projects from around the web. One is a Halloween talking clock based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Another is a jump scare tombstone using an Adafruit Halloween M4 with CircuitPython. Uh, someone put a moving eyeball in their door for tonight. Super janky, but should last long enough for trick-or-treating, thanks to the Adafruit Cutie Pie and CircuitPython. Next is a moving skull prop using an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M0 programmed in CircuitPython. And there's also a Halloween music box with CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi Pico. And that's it for community news. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, uh, which these topics were a preview of, is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. The URL is github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter. Check out the drafts folder there and submit a pull request uh, with the changes. You can click the pencil icon in the top right to edit the file straight on the web. Um, you may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com, and we'll add it, uh, the topics there. OK, so that's the first section. The next section is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. It is a kind of more statistical overview of the project meant to kind of ground us in the realities of things before we talk about the, the less tangible stuff. So uh, overall, I'll take a time here. Uh, we had 49 pull requests merged from 28 different authors, which is awesome. Um, some folks to highlight. A. Agiso, uh, Lila Plugowski, Colorado Carlos, Process 1183, Tech Trick, Ronnie uh, Lamato, J. Simmons, Zeb, Zebular13, Tyler Crumpton, and Carrie K007 are all folks that we've highlighted as new. Um, so thank you to all the new folks who are new authors to CircuitPython, the broad CircuitPython ecosystem. We had 12 reviewers, so thanks again to all of our reviewers for uh, supporting all of those authors, especially the new ones. Um, and issues-wise, uh, overall, we had 30 closed issues by 9 people and 16 opened by 12 people. So we're down 14, which is awesome. Uh, next subsection we have here is the core, the stats for the core. Uh, this is just the like C code base uh, for CircuitPython. Uh, in that code base, we had 16 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. So thank you to all of our authors there. We had five reviewers. So thank you to all of our reviewers. We have seven open pull requests, which is uh, pretty, pretty good for us. The oldest one is 58 days old. Um, and the newest one is actually five days old. So not a whole lot of activity since these, uh, in the last few days since these stats were taken. Um, issues wise, we had 11 closed issues by four people, six open by four people. So we're net down five, which is awesome, for a total of 444 open issues. 
uh, we keep track kind of uh, prioritization and uh, on our active milestones by uh, by assigning a milestone to issues. Uh, so the two main ones we have going right now is 7.x.x uh, .x has 19 open issues. These are the ones that we think we should tackle kind of sooner rather than later. And then we also have uh, the, a number of issues not assigned a milestone. It's currently negative two, uh, which is clearly not correct. Uh, so hopefully we're, uh, we don't have any, which is good. Um, overall, uh, I think we're, we're seven O has been really great and we're definitely needing to do a seven one soon. Um, so keep an eye out for a, a test build of 7.1 and then hopefully a stable uh, version soon after that. If you want to try the things that will be in 7.1, you can always click absolute latest on circuitpython.org slash downloads. And thank you for to whomever is taking the notes for me because I never managed to write it down. OK, uh, next up we have the libraries section. So I'll kick it over to Katni for an update on the libraries. All right, thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore and a few other things, including the community bundle and our cookie cutter. Across all those repos, we had 29 pull requests merged from 14 different authors and 10 different reviewers. A number of those are some of the new folks that Scott highlighted uh, in when talking about things overall. I won't highlight them again, but I just want to say thanks to everyone who has been contributing. Uh, we had, um, oh, and that leaves us with 58 open pull requests. Uh, we had 18 issues closed by seven people and nine open by eight people, uh, leaving us with 627 open issues. Of those, 266 are good first issues. If you're looking to contribute to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. It has all of this information and more, and you can uh, take a look at the issues, search them, uh, by label, good first issue is an excellent place to start if you're new to everything or, or new to contributing to open source. Um, you can take a look at those. Otherwise, you can check out bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little more complicated. And uh, just make a comment on that issue. Let us know you're working on it. And we are always available to help. Uh, if you're interested in getting started reviewing, take a look at the open pull requests. If you have the hardware, give it a test. If you don't, just look at the code for syntax or spelling or that sort of thing. Uh, and leave a comment and let us know that you took a look at it. That's always very helpful. And um, we, uh, if, once you're comfortable with that, we can take a look at um, adding you to our review team. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had uh, no new libraries, but a number of updated libraries that I will not read off. Um, overall, Hacktoberfest went quite well. Thank you so much to everyone who participated, and a special thank you to the reviewers who made it possible. We had an influx of new folks, at least one of whom has begun contributing in other ways, which is great to see. As a side note, the Hacktoberfest labels on the issues were not removed. We're looking into why Adabot failed to do so. We may do it manually, quote unquote, um, and sort out Adabot later. Uh, otherwise, we're still working through older PRs, which is also good. And finally, thanks to everyone who has been contributing and persisting through CI failures and so on to get PRs passing. That's what I've got. Thank you, Katni. OK, next up, uh, Melissa's out today. Uh, so I am going to read off the stats for Blinka. Blinka is the uh, CircuitPython API compatibility layer for m single board computers, like the Raspberry Pi, but also uh, microcontrollers that are running uh, MicroPython. So that's what this encompasses. Uh, we had four, mul pr four pull requests merged from four different authors. So thank you to all those different authors. Uh, there are th currently three open pull requests, two on Blinka and one on Blinka BLEIO. The oldest is 264 days old. Uh, one issue closed by one person and one opened by one person. So net even. Uh, for a total of 65 open issues on Adafruit, github.com slash Adafruit slash Adafruit Blinka issues. Uh, download numbers uh, for from PyWheels, downloads in the last month, 13,641. And the number of supported boards stands at 76. And that's it for Steady Circuit Python libraries in Blinka. Next up, we have Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for the awesome work that they are doing. I will start uh, and then go through the list. So it's done. It's kind of a round robin, meaning to give everybody a chance to say something. 
Um, if you do want to say something or have notes, uh, go ahead and drop them in the notes doc. If nothing's in the notes doc, I'll just assume that you're not uh, participating. Just listening in. To say you're not participating may not be fair. OK. For myself, uh, two, two hugs. Um, one to Skur, uh, Seth, for helping folks on the Discord, was checking in and saw that he's been super helpful. So thank you, say, thank you Seth, for being such a huge part of this community. And then also a hug report to Minikari, my partner, for finding a costume for me to wear on my stream last week. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should at least uh, look at the thumbnail to see see my uh, Blinka costume from last week. Okay, uh, now let, I'll circle around and read off folks as I hit them. Uh, first up, we have a hug report from Anecdata for Microdev. It says, once again, for work on the monitor mode and humoring me on my naive questions. Next up is Dan. OK, thank you. Um, two uh, two uh, hug reports for uh, bug reporters. Shabazz123 found that when they were plugging in um, a board with 700, it would sometimes erase the flash. And they tested it uh, in a systematic way and found out that a certain time interval during that period Happened. So we have to try to reproduce that. And thanks to Toddbot for trying out some of the new HID device features with some longer than I expected um, uh, values. And I have to make it possible to give larger values there. So thanks to Toddbot for that. <laughs> OK. Thanks, Dan. Uh, for those of you who are listening who aren't watching the video actively, Jeff and Katni also meant to put in a picture of me from my stream. So if you want to see what my costume was, you can check out the, the video now. You'll see it. Uh, OK, next up, we have Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Scott. Um, first hug reports this week for Mark Gambler and Keith the EE for helping review uh, the type annotation PRs. Um, we had quite a few of those come in, so I was definitely happy to get help uh, from those folks. And also for uh, Katni, went through a couple of times and spotted ones that we had missed and tagged us on them, so appreciate that as well. Um, next hug report for all of the first time contributors from the, the past few weeks. I know we had quite a few uh, that came in for Hacktoberfest, so I appreciate all of those folks who uh, joined up and made their first contribution to the project. And then a group hug for everybody else. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Filmy Guy. Next up is Jepler. Hi, I have a group hug, first of all, uh, and then one for Damien and Gemma. They took some time to chat with us about async IO last week. And I think the most interesting thing I got out of that conversation is just how much closer they made it a goal to be to desktop Python when they invented their async IO, implemented their async IO module, which is a little bit of a change from where they started at. And that's cool. Um, anyway, and then my last hug is to Dan for digging into async and helping me start to understand it just a little bit as well. It's been one of those things that continues sailing over my head, and I know I'll get there, and particularly with the help of other people guiding me through it a little bit. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up, we have notes from Jerry, who says, group hug, just listening today. And after Jerry, we have Katni. All right, so first of all, a uh, hug report to Scott for running the meeting last minute when construction picked up here without warning. Um, to Foamy Guy, this is again, because uh, I uh, gave this hug report when uh, the good first issues were created, uh, but thank you for creating the good first issues heading into Hacktoberfest, and then for keeping up with reviewing, testing, requesting changes, and merging a majority of the subsequent PRs. Uh, thank you to Mark Gambler and Keith EE for reviewing some of the Hacktoberfest type annotation PRs as well. Um, and an extra special hug report to Foamy Guy for handling the last minute PRs that came in mm -hmm. late last night, which I was really, really, really hoping wouldn't happen, uh, but inevitably it did. Um, unrelated hug report to Foamy Guy for adding explicit documentation links to the library readmes. We had the documentation bad, but that's kind of an obtuse way to get to the documentation. We never actually linked to the docs um, in a section of the readme and now we do so that's across all the libraries awesome. um so thank you for adding that um hug report to all the new folks who joined us for hacktoberfest and contributed to the libraries over the last four weeks and a group hug awesome thank you katney all right next up we have notes from melissa 
who says, a hug report to Tanu, myself, for getting the mobile device BLE circuit Python crash fixed so quickly, and a group hug. Uh, last up, I have notes from Mark uh, Gambler, who says, hug report to Katni and Foamy Guy for helping review some PRs I had questions on. Hug report to Tectric for being a first-time contributor and having patience when some strange issues occur. And a group hug. So that's it for hug reports. Next up is status updates. Uh, status updates is done as a round robin as well, but this time we're talking uh, briefly about what we've been up to, what we're working on the past week, what we hope to work on in the coming week. Uh, again, I will start and then go through the list here. So first up for me, uh, last week I was working on speeding up CircuitPython execution on the Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 specifically. And I managed to do it by basically setting everything up to be cacheable, which is cool. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll find bugs based on that because caching is hard. Uh, I started working on SD card support, um, didn't make it super far. So that's what I'm primarily doing this week. My next step is to solder onto the Pi Unora so I can sniff the SD card lines. I will be working on SD card and, and if I get fed up with that, taking a break by setting up boards and adding the 02W support. Uh, which I plan on probably working on on Friday as well. Uh, I should also say that I took a little time last week to... Uh, Melissa had tickled a crash in the BLE workflow um, that was due to uh, Android devices doing a um, transmission unit size of 20 bytes. And when I had added the 64-bit timestamp, I had caused that uh, code to crash. So... Um, there is now a fix in CircuitPython for that, so we'll, that's one reason I think we're going to want to do 7.1 pretty soon is because the BLE workflow from Android devices will cause crashes otherwise. Um, so that's it for me, and next up we'll go to Dan. Okay, thanks. Um, so the main thing and almost the only thing I did uh, past week was work a lot on um, async I.O., which is using... Uh, there are these async and await uh, keywords in CircuitPython to do cooperative multitasking. They just are sort of the syntactic sugar for helping to do that. And async IO is one library to do that. It's in CPython and MicroPython has a stripped down version of async IO. Um, it's part of the, it's not a library, it's built into MicroPython. It's frozen in, but um, I just took it out and made it a library and changed a few lines and I got it to work on CircuitPython. I had to make a few CircuitPython uh, core changes too, but not very many. So I have an example where I have two LEDs running in two different cooperative multitasks or cooperative tasks. One's blinking at one rate and one's blinking at the other rate and they're blinking independently. So, uh, this, so the basic idea works. There's some issues about, um, I'm seeing some weird crashes occasionally. Um, when the board starts up. And the next thing I will look at is seeing if I can add async uh, constructs to like the LED animation library, which is one of those libraries where you really want to be able to interrupt a long running thing and change what it's doing or just stop it altogether. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Um... So uh, this past week, uh, definitely still reviewing lots of the typing PRs. Uh, most of those came in for Hacktoberfest. I imagine that will slow down a little bit, uh, but we do still have all the open issues, so I'll keep an eye out for any of those that uh, people keep working on. Um, I On the my stream over the weekend, I worked on a Pac-Man-style game, uh, and I got the bulk of the functionality done, so players and walls and ghosts and pellets are all working. You can move around. Uh, this runs on a Pico device with a little add-on screen. I also did some refactoring to try to separate out the actual game-specific code away from the helper object that I uh, created previously to kind of import maps from the tiled uh, game map editor software. So uh, I had those kind of convoluted and, and paired together a little bit, and I got those uh, a lot more generalized and broken apart. Uh, and I have a couple ideas for some twists that I like to add on to the game that are not in the, uh, the original version, at least as far as I'm aware. So I'll be playing with that a little bit more and doing some of those in the, the next coming weeks. Um, another thing that 
popped up that I kind of want to try to do this week is make a selectable list widget for display IO. So it will display like a vertical list of strings and it will give you a little arrow or something that points to one. And the user has the ability to go up and down through the list and then uh, enter on whichever one is selected. So this could be used for uh, like menus and you know selecting settings and all sorts of things where you have a, a list of strings that you want the user to pick one from. Um, and the other thing I have, uh, which we talked about in the weeds last week, is trying out that Stubbs generator library and working out a proposal for how we can include uh, PYI stubs in libraries that are not currently deployed uh, onto PyPy. So that's what I got for this week. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Foamy Guy. All right. Next up is Jepler. Yeah, I just have to get back to my notes because I was doing something else. Um, <laughs> just so easy to get distracted. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So last week, my focus was on camera stuff again. Uh, I got the animated GIF saving up to 10 frames per second if you go down to the 240 by 240 resolution, which is still pretty cool. I added uh, color dithering so it works really well and it doesn't, it looks really good, doesn't decrease the uh, frame rate much. And then I started on black and white dither. Um, so this week, I'm going to continue working on the black and white dither of images from the camera. And the goal is to get it photo printing to a thermal printer this week. So I'll be able to take a picture, maybe save it to the SD card as an intermediate step, or maybe just immediately uh, send it out the printer. And then uh, one thing standing in the way of that is, according to the, the inline comments of the thermal printer library, uh, the bitmap mode doesn't work on CircuitPython. It sounded like the author wasn't exactly sure why, so I need to figure out what's up with that and get it working. So um, yeah, that's the next thing that I will be doing after trying to optimize the black and white dither just a little bit more. It would be nice if it was as smooth as, well, it won't be as smooth as, but it would be nice if you could preview it on the LCD and not have it feel slow. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's what's up. It's camera, 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 camera. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Jeff. All right, next up is Katni. Hello. So last week I published the VL53L1X guide. Um, it is a time of flight distance sensor that has a very long range. Um, so if you picked up one of those, the guide is published. I continued overhauling the Welcome to Circuit Python guide. I submitted a PR to the core to update all example references to board.d13 to board.led where applicable. Recorded some audio clips for a project being done by Philby, Noah, and Pedro. I believe there's going to be video clips of that. Um, so if you wonder what a you know downsampled Katni robot sounds like, um, look out for that project. Um, migrated our PyPI builds to be using an API key instead of login credentials. I actually met with um, the PyPI package manager. They uh, put out a, f a feedback form a while back. Um, a while like the last two weeks, um, asking how people use PyPI um, with a team of people and what issues or features or whatever they you know would want or need to continue doing that. And uh, their next step was to actually meet with folks who provided feedback. So I agreed to meet with them. And they asked uh, quite a few questions. And um, one of the things I talked about was the fact that uh, part of how we deal with PyPI is we do have a single account with shared credentials um, and how that can be um, not the greatest way to deal with things, but also a little frustrating if we do have to change those credentials because um, those are used for all of our builds. And um, unrelated to the conversation uh, in terms of like team usage, um, the uh, one of the other people in the meeting suggested that uh, there relatively recently PyPI added API keys that can be used in in lieu of of uh, login credentials. Um, so I, I updated our stuff to use that, which I think is really good. Um, I updated the CircuitPython core documentation troubleshooting page. A user reported um, some confusion in there, and the confusion was actually just a typo. But um, after looking at the whole page, it was extremely out of date. So it's it's much better now. Um, on Sunday, I went through some Hacktoberfest PRs as well as some other PRs in between. Um, 
and finally put together a list of suggested uh, updated product photos for the Adafruit photographer. So we have some options to use moving forward that are more up to date. Pretty much all the multi-board images we have right now are M0 boards, which we are A, trying to encourage folks not to use, um, and B, they're just older. We have so many new products. Um, it would be great to be able to, you know, in a guide, have an image that is a series of updated um, products. So that's what we're going for there. And apparently the plan is to uh, try and do them over time because the list was was pretty extensive. Um, so that's where that is. This week, continue the CircuitPython, welcome to CircuitPython guide overhaul. The last things to do are update the welcome to the community guide page, write the CircuitPython documentation page and write the how do I learn Python page. Um, as a sort of addition to that, I'm going to be adding in the LED animation library guide, a page on how to load part of a library. This will be linked in the welcome guide, um, but it won't be part of the welcome guide because the, really the main library that this applies to is the LED animation library. It doesn't fit on M0 boards and a lot of people want to use it with M0 boards. And the answer is to load only the animations you want to use, but simply telling someone to do that is a support nightmare because we don't have it documented anywhere. So the plan is to document that so that we actually have something to point folks to. Um, so they're, you know, NeoPixel Trinky or whatever um, can run LED animations, um, at least part of them at any given point in time. Some of them will never work on M0, even just the one animation, but um, a lot of them will run if you only load the ones that you need. Um, I'm putting together a list of new Blinka art ideas. Uh, if you have any for us to consider, please let me know. Um, tag me on Discord, at Katni. Um, I don't know that we will do all of them, obviously, but um, we uh, haven't done a new series of, of Blinka art in a while. Um, so we started a list internally and I'm happy to consider anything other folks um, want to suggest. Um, and then I need to fix one of the links on the CircuitPython core docs troubleshooting page that changed inside the learn guide. Um, I will be getting some feedback on the welcome guide once it's um, done or finalized anyway, um, because uh, the idea is to create a better experience for folks who are going through the guide. So I will um, either contact some folks directly or just put it out there to say, please take a look at this guide and let me know if you have any suggestions. Um, and then finally, I will be updating the readme on the pretty pins repo so that the process is actually documented. It's not currently documented anywhere. Um, I'm really the only one doing it at the moment, but it would be nice if other folks are able to do it as well. So um, d despite that, the, the documentation will be written for myself. Um, but if other folks can pick it up and figure it out, that would also be great. And then I will be doing more pretty pins diagrams. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right, last up, I've got notes from maker Melissa. If anybody has topics for In the Weeds, now's the time to put them there. There are none currently, so we're, we're fit, approaching the end otherwise. Uh, okay, so maker Melissa says, uh, last week finished up mobile sizing optimizations for CircuitPython code editor, uh, updated the file transfer library to work with the fixed CircuitPython bug, updated the CircuitPython code editor to be m much more reliable with connections, added a busy animation, which makes the editor seem much more responsive. Kind of amazing how that works. Updated co color scheme to be much easier to read. And this week, working on wrapping up the code editor with remaining items on the to-do list. Possibly start working on a guide for the code editor if there are no major things to change and we can get a, good, a new version of CircuitPython release with the bug fixes. Um, and for those of you who don't know, this is code.circuitpython.org is what Melissa's working on. Um, so it uses web Bluetooth to talk to CircuitPython devices. And that's it for our status updates. Uh, in the weeds, uh, we don't have any topics, but just as a reminder for folks, uh, it is a chance for us to have any longer form discussions that we'd like to have. Uh, we don't have any this week, but uh, if you ever do have things that you'd like to bring up to the, the audience of folks who are here, um, feel free to join the meeting or drop a topic in the notes. We'd be happy to cover it. All right, and let's move on to wrap up. Um, let me switch as well. So this has been the... CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 1st, 2021. 
Thank you to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython for Adafruit, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Micro Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. However, note if you're outside of the U.S., uh, the U.S. will switch from summer to winter time next Sunday. So if you're outside of the U.S., the time will change for you because we keep it at U.S. time and U.S. time is changing. Uh, so the next meeting is at November 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is UTC minus 5. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're outside the U.S. that the time will change for you even the though the time is technically not changing for us in the US. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to, a to the URL adafru.it slash discord. It's our URL shortener. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. Uh, standard time, yep. <laughs> And in summary, that is why daylight saving time should be abolished, says Jeff. I agree. Uh, with that, we hope to see you all next week. And uh, we'll try to do an extra reminder just for, because of the time change. So thank you all. And uh, we'll see you on the discords. Thanks, everyone.